Hello there, Romans here and welcome to the first installment in my Wish I Knew That 10 Years Ago series where I pretty much give answers I wish I had when I was like 17 or 18 and I think they would have made my life much easier. Today I'm going to talk about how to deal with criticism which is something that I know quite a lot about as I'm a musician. More specifically I'm a singer, songwriter and a bass player for my own group Yakube and something like four months ago we have released our debut album called Persids in Life. What makes the record unique is that it's a pretty heavy prog rock music without guitars. Instead you have drums, bass, saxophone and keyboards. You can check out the first single, We're Building Our Own Monument, on my YouTube channel. And in the description of that video you will find the, all the information about where is the record available, like all the digital platforms, Spotify, Tidal, Deezer, Amazon, or iTunes. But it's also available in this Digipack version of a CD with a very beautifully illustrated 20 pages long booklet. So, and today I'm going to give you a few tips how to deal with criticism. This is going to be from a viewpoint of a musician, but it doesn't really matter if you are, uh, I don't know, an actor, a painter or any kind of artist. It doesn't even matter if you are not an artist at all, because, I mean, there are so many situations where you will have to do or create something and whatever you do, you can actually get criticized for it. I'm going to use my own experience and uh, I'm going to give you 10 tips which I think might help you deal with the criticism better. I know that they help me a lot and this is actually something that I've realized ever since I've released my debut album and ever since I've recorded it. So this is pretty much all of my thoughts in like last seven or eight months. So let's start with that. Number one, filter out hateful comments. There is a pretty big difference between criticism and a hateful comment. Both of them are negative in their nature, but criticism is actually an opinion. Hateful comments are made by people who I actually feel very sorry for because they lack balance in their life, they are not happy, they are miserable, and with these hateful comments they want to spread all that negative energy and they want to make other people feel as bad as they do. This is maybe more easily seen on social media, especially YouTube, where anonymity can encourage anybody to post a hateful comment. But it can happen also in like real life. Just imagine that you have a concert and there are many people you will not know and you know somebody may say ah oh, it was such a bad man you know your songs suck and you're just the worst singer okay let me give you an example when i started my youtube channel that was back in 2010 at that point i was not really planning to be a youtuber it was more about using that platform to share my own music share my performances and maybe share some songs that have not been uploaded before from various artists and I think it was in 2011 that I uploaded um, uploaded a few performances from the gig that I had with my first group called Bad Pools. And we had the Ozzy Osbourne's cover Bark at the Moon. And when I uploaded that video I got some negative response to that. First of all there was some guy from Slovakia who commented that uh, Buck as Moon, which I later on assumed was... Uh, how he thought I pronounced Bark at the Moon and he said that I was um, so it was him poking at my I think accent or maybe pronunciation and he also wrote that the singer was a heavy tragedy uh, and that I was another uh, Kandrač that was uh, that was that's a name of a guy who was in one of the Slovak idols and I don't know what was wrong with that guy but he just whatever song he uh, sang, he just butchered the words and he was just coming up with his own words. It was very funny and he called me his name so he said that I was kind of like him. Uh, then there was another guy from I think America who wrote that good but get rid of the guitar player, drummer and a singer. You know my first thought was that wow I'm a good as a bass player because we were a three piece and I was playing bass. And there was another guy from Canada who asked me if I just shouted random words when singing that song. And I got really offended. This was back in when I was like 19 or 20, so uh, I was pretty far from the mindset I'm in right now. And I wrote him that uh, I'm a pretty big perfectionist and I wouldn't perform a song until I really knew all the words. And he, he went on saying something like, are you seriously telling me that you 
know the words, that you know what you're singing about, that you know how to pronounce them, and, you know, stuff like that. All of these three comments are actually hateful comments because they... Really, there's nothing that they would... You know, it's not even an opinion of someone. It's really just trying to get you down, trying to make you feel bad about yourself. Funny thing, uh, something like a year or two uh, forward, I've discovered that all of these comments were made by one person, by a guy where, uh, with whom I recorded my early demos. He had a home student. He was actually a pretty good. He had very good ears for creating a great sound. And this guy was always, always talking about people and talking about them behind their backs in front of me. He was putting everybody down and he was just making fun out of everybody. And, you know, when I realized that stuff, it was just kind of logical that he would do the same with other people about me. So, uh, there's that. So, when there's a hateful comment, what I'm trying to say is don't, don't really even think about it. It's not worth it. And hateful comment is something that simply has no value whatsoever. Every time I see a hateful comment like that, I just pray for that person to either get late or maybe to find some light in their life. Number two, identify the source of criticism. This is very important. When somebody criticizes you, you should be aware of what his interests, his preferences and his kind of a background is. Of course, if it's a foreign or if it's a stranger, you may not be aware of that. But if it's a friend, it's always easy to know where they come from. For example, you are a jazz musician, you write a jazz song and your metalhead friend doesn't like that song. Well, of course he doesn't like that when he enjoys listening to metal. So you should be always aware of, uh, of like the source of criticism and take into consideration their background. I'll give you a very good example. My friend and keyboard player on my debut album, Pursuits in Life, Stevie Hart, he told me quite many times that he doesn't really like it when I sing in my upper register, when I hit the high tones, and he always told me that you should write songs in a lower register. But, you know, turns out, and this is something that I've known about him for a very long time, he simply doesn't like that type of singing. So, you know, if I played him songs sang by Michael Kiske, Geoff Tate, Bruce Dickinson, whatever, he simply doesn't like that type of singing. So it means that for me personally, there is nothing I can do to make him like my singing. Therefore, his criticism is not very crucial for me because he simply doesn't like that type of of singing and therefore there's nothing I can do to make him like it. If there would be a um, a friend who really loves listening to uh, singers like that and he told me that I don't like your higher notes, I don't like your higher register, okay, it would kind of hurt but it would be from someone who is more acquired to that type of singing. But if it comes from Stevie, you know, he simply doesn't like that, I respect that and there's no, not really any reason for me to be sad or depressed about it because I identified the source of criticism. Number three, realize that it's just an opinion. This is something that I've been already talking about. Um, it may be an opinion of one or maybe even a few people, but it is actually up to you how much weight you give to a certain opinion. So again, if you write a prog rock song, and you have a friend who's really a prog hat. His opinion is the one that you're kind of looking for. But, you know, if you write prog rock music and your jazz friend doesn't like it, it's okay, because maybe that's not his main area of interest or it's not music he listens to normally. And with this, we're getting to number four. Don't argue and don't take it personally. So, first of all, don't argue. I've seen that many times and even I've been... Um, involved with many arguments like this. Let me give you an example. You play your song to someone and he's like, uh, I don't like that song, I think the chorus isn't very good. And you are like, what? What do you mean it's not good? I mean, you like that song and you don't like my song? Well, listen to the chorus. It's just, you know, it's so perfect, the chord progression, how it goes, and it's such a catchy melody and that heart... And he's like, don't do this. I've done that quite a lot of times when I was younger, but just First of all, try to realize what you're doing here. When somebody criticizes you, again, I'm repeating myself, but he's giving you his opinion or her opinion. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to change 
that opinion. Does it really make sense? Is it really worth it, all that energy, all, all that amount of time that you spent arguing with him? I think not. So, you know, it doesn't really make sense. And also, don't take it personally. When somebody tells you, I don't like your song, we have already established that we're not talking about hateful comments. So, these people don't necessarily want to hurt you. Like, I don't like your song. I hurt him. <laughs> It's simply their opinion, you don't have to take it personally and there's not really anything else I can say about it. Number five, acquire whatever attitude. Anytime you get criticized or anytime, even when you are uh, faced with the hateful comment, whatever, just, you know, what you should think in your mind is whatever, dude, whatever. And it will help you to stay above the things and it will help you not waste any sleep over it. It's very important. So it takes time, maybe, but I think the less you give a damn, the better. When I was editing this video, there were still a few things that I came to think of. Uh, so with what I've said, I don't mean you should be arrogant, okay? Just simply don't take that criticism that seriously. And you know, uh, it's not like your life depends on the criticism. So try to be a little like, you know, whatever. Number six, don't let one bad feedback overshadow all the remaining good feedback. Again, from my own experience, something like six or seven months ago, that was a couple of months before my record was released, I sent my record to a friend who is kind of similar to me in that he knows tons of music. He's like, I think like 10 years older than me and he knows that much more music and I think that he has heard a couple thousands of records in his life and uh, I we have quite same music taste so I sent him my record and he wrote me his own review it wasn't released anywhere it was just uh, it was just for me so uh, he pretty much praised like 99% of the record and you know if I had to kind of like give some conclusion he pretty much said that that record was a masterpiece and it's really fantastic there were a few things he criticized, some of which I don't really care about, but there was one thing that got me so angry that I couldn't let it go for many, many days. And he said that I have problems with your singing because you have a very strong Slovak accent when you sing. So he criticized my English and suddenly I forgot about all that good stuff, all that praise he gave to the record and that was the only thing I was obsessed about and I just couldn't let it go. So this is actually a very difficult thing to do but when somebody gives you very complex feedback don't let that one one bad thing overshadow all the good thing that he wrote. You know, Again, it's an opinion and it's up to you how much weight you give to that certain criticism. It's like, you know, you have a gig and everybody comes to tell you that was an amazing show, I loved it. There's one guy, there's always that one guy who tells you it wasn't good enough, you know, or the sound was really bad, or oh, you missed a lot of notes. And then, you know, you find yourself thinking about what that one guy said instead of like those 30 people who praised the gig. So don't underappreciate the praise and don't let one bad feedback overshadow all the good ones. Okay, we're getting to number seven. When in doubt, ask people whose opinion you value and who you know you can trust. This is very important. I'm gonna get back to that review that a friend of mine gave me and he criticized my English. He said that I have a very strong Slovak accent and I got very angry. I got so obsessed about it. And after a couple of months, there were a few more people uh, writing me criticism like uh, your English accent could be better or that um, your English is terrible, based on the song. And I just got so angry, I was like, what the hell are these people talking about? Their English may be like intermediate tops or even lower. I have studied English language for five years at university. I've been surrounded by English day by day, every day since I was like 10 years old. I pretty much do this for a living. I'm an English language teacher. My accent is as perfect as it can get. What the hell are they talking about? I'm giving you my stream of conscious from like six months ago and um, you know when you when you got 
certain negative criticism about something about you once, twice, maybe three times, four times, maybe at that point you should start to think about, okay, am I the one who sees it the wrong way? Are they right? And therefore you should ask people who you really trust about the opinion. Let me tell you how I dealt with the whole situation. When I was studying English language at the university, there were, uh, I think, like three teachers who were originally from England, meaning that they were Englishmen. And one of them I stayed in touch with, and I sent him all the lyrics from the record for him to proofread that. And there were actually, I think, like three or four things that forced me to go back to studio and re-record that in terms of grammar. And then I sent him the record as a sort of a thank you, also to get some feedback from him because he's a pretty big music nerd. And when all these things happened, I, th I said that, okay, it, it's not important what I think, it's not important what, what these people think. There's only one way I can really set the record straight, and it's by asking a native speaker about my English. So this was a couple of weeks after he had the record, so I confronted him with this and I said, okay, so this is what I've been told, this is what some people wrote me, you're from England, so what's your opinion? As I was paraphrasing what he told me, I decided to read you exactly what he wrote me, so here it is. The English is more than good enough. There are a few very small things in the pronunciation of some words, but they're not serious enough to spoil the understanding or necessitate you re-recording any vocals, and many international singers who sing in English aren't as good as you, so I think you can be happy and very satisfied. This is what he actually wrote me when I just like casually ask him about the English and then I told him about all the criticism that I got and that I have a very strong Slovak accent. He's actually a teacher. He teaches I think at primary school but I think he is quite aware of how Slovaks speak and so on. So when I asked him about this he said no I don't think you have a very strong accent it's not 100% native English, but it's very good. You don't have to worry. Well, uh, honestly, I don't think anyone who's not a native speaker can have 100% native uh, accent. And this pretty much settles the thing for me. There were even quite a lot of people from like America or Canada who heard my record and none of them actually complained about my accent when I sing. So. Uh, there's it. So this for me closed the whole thing and I didn't need to worry about it anymore. So when you are in doubt, ask people who know won't lie to you and who know have some valuable opinion to give you. Okay, number eight. Differentiate and appreciate constructive criticism. What is that? Well, we've already established that criticism is an opinion per se but constructive criticism actually gives you like a hint or a clue not only what to improve because that you can know also from just a criticism but also how to improve it let me give you a really good example of something like a hateful comment and a constructive criticism one of the groups that I was singing in was graceful was the name of the group it's kind of like Van Halen slash extreme band and we had an acoustic gig and there was a there was a guy who told me like you shouldn't sing the high notes because they're not modern anymore they're not in anymore and this opinion of his was coming from most of the 80s rock groups releasing records that were that were much heavier they were dropped guitars and even the singers were singing much lower but that wasn't only because of the music changes but also because of them being older and not being able maybe to sing like they did in their prime but whatever you know what kind of an opinion is that don't sing the high notes because it's not popular who is he to tell me what is popular and what is in and what is not on the other hand there was a friend of mine who's actually a really great musician and he told me that when you sing the high notes try to go a little further from the microphone because when you sing everything at the same distance the high notes are just so loud that they become unpleasant to listen to. And I was like, wow, that's something I wouldn't have thought about before. And every time I was singing since that constructive criticism, I was thinking about it. And 
every time I had to hit a, night, a high tone I just went a little further from the microphone. This is great because he gives you something that may improve what you're already doing. Another great example is that um, some years ago when I was singing some more difficult songs and some higher pitched songs or you know songs in a higher register there were people who told me like you tend to struggle more in the higher notes well duh I mean it's like going to the gym and seeing somebody bench pressing 200 kilos of course he's going to struggle because it's harder than to bench press I don't know 50 kilos so you know that's that's something that even I'm aware of when I was singing those difficult songs I was aware of that okay I wasn't singing them with as much of an ease as I would hope for but you know saying that you struggle it's like you know every singles every singer every singer struggles with higher notes but for example uh, another friend of mine told me uh, like uh, when you sing those difficult songs sometimes maybe you should skip certain difficult parts and like I don't know you don't go up there but you just change or you make some some nice harmony you don't have to do everything exactly like in a studio because who cares really except you and he was right you know and this is actually constructive criticism because he doesn't just tell you that it's bad don't do that he actually tells you it's like this but you can do this so if somebody gives you a constructive criticism be thankful and appreciate it a lot because it can help you a lot number nine reply with kindness and humbleness and take some time to reply this is very easily applicable to social media like Facebook and especially YouTube but also in a real life let me elaborate on this a very good example is my music reviews where I review records and last year there was a new album from Steelheart called uh, through the world of Sardust or something like that and I kinda acknowledged that there were quite a lot of edits in the in the review but I did that review I posted it and the next day in the morning I got a pretty hateful comment actually uh, the guy was saying something like I'm paraphrasing as of now you have 50 views on the review meaning that you are no one you think you have something to say but you have nothing to say your opinion means nothing he was saying something about how he liked the group and then he said you can eat the shit so pretty much what he said was that I'm no one that I think I have something to say but I have nothing to say and I I must confess I've read that like four or five times and you know it was kind of like the first thing I did in the morning and I just couldn't get it I was like what the hell is he talking about? And do you know how I replied to his comment? I said, thank you. Or I think it was, thank you for your opinion, something like that. And uh, prior to making this video, I wanted to take a screenshot of that and to show it. But he actually deleted his comment sometime after that because, you know, I don't really go back and check it out. Another great example is when uh, one of the Slovak radios um, posted an article about me and about my record and about a single. I posted, uh, they uh, shared it on their Facebook and there was a guy who wrote like uh, something in a way, I'm not sure how to translate it to English, but it was something like, this is very nicely or very beautifully described cliche rock and I can see it and he wrote I think two very small places where that music in his opinion would fit so he pretty much said that it's it's a cliche rock you know it's always easy to criticize it's always difficult to create and I was actually feeling sorry for him because it must have been a guy who I think was probably unhappy in his life because you know when somebody writes I don't like this song or I'm not really that much of a fan of that okay but this was a hateful comment do you know what I wrote I said thanks for your opinion there's one more example that I can think of I remember that there is a Facebook page for all the bass players from Slovakia and I posted my article posted an article about me and about my record there because since the record is so heavily based on bass I thought that many bass players may find it interesting and there was a guy who wrote me uh, I'm, I'm not showing you any screenshots of that because it was all on, in Slovak so I guess it wouldn't make much sense uh, to most of you and he wrote me uh, something like it's not 
bad, it doesn't sound like beginners, but it's not my cup of coffee and or a cup of tea or a cup of juice and that um, what about that English it's really horrible and uh, I cannot really translate it exactly like he wrote it in Slovak but he wrote it in a very primitive way he was using not a proper Slovak language he was using very primitive version of Slovak language if that makes sense so many times people giving you hateful comments are you know it's, it's usually you have two types of people. You have either people who are extremely unhappy in their lives and they don't have any balance and they simply want to make you miserable or these are some stupid and very narrow-minded people. And I'm getting back to the point I was saying don't argue with stupid people because you're never gonna win. So just, you know, do you know what I replied to him? I told him or I wrote him thank you for your opinion. That was it. And I, I'm pretty sure that was the one reaction he wasn't expecting. If you reply with kindness and humbleness, that is something that they will absolutely not expect and it will, tell, it will take them off guard and also take some time to reply. I know that when somebody writes you or tells you something really, really offensive, you may get very angry, but try to control those emotions. Don't react immediately. Try to, try to be rational about it and then reply with kindness and humbleness. As I said, this is more easily applicable to YouTube or Facebook, but it can happen even in the real life. Just imagine that you have a gig and somebody comes to you and tells you, oh, that wasn't a good gig, you know, you sucked. And you say, thank you, sir. Thank you that you were here and you watched the gig. And sorry, sorry if we weren't that good. You know, something like that. That's exactly the type of a reaction they would not expect. Okay, and we're getting to point number 10, and this will be probably your favorite one. Realize that hate means you're doing it right. If you do something and you got haters, then you're doing it right. It's like with my record purses in life. There were so many people who criticized me for not having, well, not so many people, but there were people who pretty much put the record down that it doesn't have guitars, it's not rock music. And, you know, I think that's a very stupid opinion, but, you know, that's the thing. When you do something that original and that unique, hateful comments and all that hate is a very natural reaction of many people who are very narrow-minded. So, if you really got the hate, you're doing it right. One final thing to say, uh, some of these points may be difficult for you or you will be like, oh, that's easier said than done. Uh, it is for me as well. Uh, I don't want you to think that I can do all of this just like that. There are many times when I have to remember these points in order to do or to react properly or to um, not let it uh, put me down. It takes time, but eventually you will get there. Just maybe write them down, think about them and try to remember them. And I can guarantee you that they will make the acceptance of criticism easier. So you can let me know your own experience with criticism in the comment section below. You can follow me on Facebook or on Instagram. You can find the links to both in the description of this video below. Don't forget to like and share this video for all of your friends, all of the artists, all of the musicians to see this. I think it can help them. Don't forget to subscribe. You can check out my own original music, some of my music reviews or my worst to best series. Thanks a lot for watching.